What is up, Steelers Nation? Thank you so much for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. I'm Noah Strackbine, joined by my main man, Stephen Thompson. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talkers. Subscribe anywhere you get your podcast, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Their headlines are filled with wide receiver news right now as they are seemingly looking for one last splash before the NFL draft. We're going to dive into all of the rumors and reports and where the Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver core could end up before the end of the offseason. Before we dive into anything, as we've been saying the last couple of weeks, make sure to go subscribe to our new YouTube channel, our Clips channel. It is in the pinned comment below. We just hit 1,000 subscribers. We'll be doing, we'll be doing a handful of, of giveaways next week. We're just kind of finalizing them, and then we'll make sure that you guys know all the details. Steven, it's been a wild week for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It does not seem to be ending anytime soon. How you feeling, my friend? I feel, I don't know, feel like my my head's all over the place, man. Like the Steelers were, I mean, we talked about this before, but they they weren't doing anything for the first day, two days, for for, for the first while of free agency. And in the first while of the offseason of the new league year. And now they've become kind of the center of the universe as far as the NFL goes, um, it seems like. Or at least it feels like. Maybe I'm just in Pittsburgh and I'm paying attention to the Steelers more than anything. But yeah. they have been as active as as any team in the league. And they have made some of the biggest moves in the league. And um, more than that, you know, just the the conversation, I feel like nationally, like ever since the Kenny Pickett trade and the, and the Justin Fields trade, it's just it's just starting to feel like the Steelers have been kind of the center of of the NFL universe for a little bit. Yeah, it's literally nonstop. And every time you think it's going to like come to a, a bit of a halt, every time you think it's like, all right, all right, there's only so much cap space available. All the big names are off the board. It's like, no, nah, they're they're not done yet. I mean, I was listening to Jerry Dulac on the Rich Eisen show when he dropped the little bomb of, I think it could be a bigger splash, a bigger catch, he said, than Mike Williams visiting the Steelers. And immediately I go, these guys are just going to they're just going to blow up the world. They're just going to continue to to make massive trades and massive moves because they're nowhere near finished. It's Super Bowl or bust for the Pittsburgh Steelers this this season. At least that's what it feels like. And they're going to make sure that their team is as jacked up as humanly possible. I don't think it's us either. I don't think it's just Pittsburgh that sees this. I don't think it's just Steelers fans that are surrounding themselves in all of these headlines. You turn on ESPN, you go on YouTube, you go Twitter, anywhere else. All anybody's talking about is Can Justin Fields start over Russell Wilson? Are the Steelers about to make a second splash? Is Omar Khan the guy? People are complaining about Kenny Pickett. It's just nonstop. The Pittsburgh Steelers are really the center of the NFL universe. And right now, the focus is on wide receiver. They were set to bring in Mike Williams on Thursday for a free agency visit. That has ended when Mike Williams showed up for a visit with the Jets Signed a one-year, $15 million deal. Let me ask this. We won't dive too much into Mike Williams and what the Steelers missed out on, but obviously one year, $15 million bucks. No chance that was happening with the Steelers, correct? Yeah, I I think the Steelers were perfectly comfortable to to let someone else pay that pay that price for Mike Williams. Um yes. if he wasn't, you know, available for a price point that would have been that would have eaten up all of their remaining salary cap space, then might have been possible, but I think as soon like Mike Williams might have given them a ring and said, Hey, they're offering me $15 million. Can you get yeah. that or or not? And then once they said no, he was like, Okay, I'm canceling my flight to Pittsburgh. That yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Mike Williams, uh, I think maybe a better player than I, I a more productive player, maybe a better uh player than I initially thought, uh, just kind of off the top of my head, but just not worth it for the Steelers at that at that price point. It does kind of put some urgency on them to make another move to, to add another st- another receiver, but um, not not the kind of fit the Steelers needed right away. No, no chance. I, as soon as I saw one year, 15 million bucks, I went, oh, okay, well, there's good for the Jets. Good for Mike Williams. I'm all about players getting paid, and this guy, see me, he got paid. He got paid way more than he was going to get paid in Pittsburgh. If he ended up with the Steelers, it was one year, 8 million bucks max. And uh, the way Omar Khan works, I would imagine it's 6, 5 million bucks. It would have been super cheap. There's no way. Now it's about what comes next. Where do the Pittsburgh Steelers go? It just sounds like it's going to be a splash trade. It sounds like they're not even waiting for the NFL draft. That's where our discussion was on Monday. That's where some of my discussion was yesterday on the live stream was 
It could be the NFL draft. The Steelers have done so much homework on these guys. I mean, ESPN's Mel Kuyper, and I know Mel Kuyper has got a bad rep, and everybody talks about how his mocks are wrong. He tossed out there that the Steelers were going to draft Brian Thomas. And that's just seemingly the direction that everybody immediately went after the Deontay Johnson trade is they're going to go, they're going to go wide receiver in the first round. It feels like they're not even waiting to make that happen. They're just going to say, whatever, we're going to get a star well beforehand. Ray Fittipaldo of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette said in his weekly chat yesterday that the Steelers are doing their due diligence on a wide receiver trade. Andrew Filipponi, which I know a lot of people are going to say you can't use that as a source. We'll toss it out there as a rumor, said that the Steelers have explored a trade for Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk blows up the internet yesterday by just simply tweeting at Mike Tomlin saying, hey, I heard that we look alike, and he is spot on. They are as twins as twins come in the NFL and really in the world in general. Those two might – Brandon Ayuk might be Mike Tomlin's long-lost son. That could – Have you ever happen. seen Brandon Ayuk and Mike Tomlin in the same room at the same time? I, have I not. haven't. I have not. That's very true. That's very true. It's – it's like why it's wild actually. He's a name that everybody's tossing out there. Then there's the people who are shooting for the stars here. Uh, Antonio Brown sparked something because you know you get one thing right, everybody's gonna latch onto it and say, Well, this guy he's he's calling the shots. Antonio Brown got the Justin Fields thing right. Now he's tossing out there that the Steelers are looking into Justin Jefferson. So we'll say that's another rumor that is possibly floating around. And don't get me wrong, I'm not taking anything that Antonio Brown says with any credit whatsoever or any credibility whatsoever. And then there's obviously T Higgins from the Cincinnati Bengals. I think we should start with Higgins just because I think it's going to be shorter here. He's set to make 21 million bucks off the franchise tag. You'd probably have to extend him to a long-term deal. He's coming from Cincinnati. There's just no way it'd be like the Pittsburgh Steelers trading George Pickens to the Bengals. There's just no chance that's going to happen, right? You're not going to cross the AFC North and say, Hey, Pittsburgh, you, you want to get better? Here you go, pal. Here's our second best wide receiver, possibly our second best offensive player. No chance, right? Yeah, I yes. When you lay it out that way, um, you don't think there's a chance that the, the Bengals could try to like really bleed the Steelers here for a bunch of draft picks and and really make them hurt to to sign Higgins. I think maybe they would try, but I just don't think Omar Khan's going to sit around and say, "Well, we got Justin Fields for a sixth round pick, and you know we have the twentieth pick in the draft, but we're going to give you seven picks and." you know, all this crazy stuff for, I mean, T Higgins of the, of the three T Higgins is the only like true, not a number one, definitely a number two receiver. I just don't like, I, they could probably try, you know, they could probably call Pittsburgh and say, yeah, we want two firsts and a second rounder for T Higgins. And Omar Khan's going to be like, all right, yeah, we'll see you in week, whatever. Sounds good. Yeah. No chance. You know, I just don't, maybe I'm wrong, yeah. but I just, I don't see that happening. I don't think you are. Um, yeah, it's, it's, Right, you're not going to aid a division rival, a team that you got to play twice a year, um, especially when they've already improved this off season. Um, yeah, like I, I, I don't think that's really possible at all. And I mean, then you factor in the price tag as well. I mean, it would put the Steelers over the over the salary cap, put them in the red. Um, they'd have to clear a lot of space to get them. And I don't know, you still have so many other needs that you need to address. You need that ten million dollars to sign all your draft picks going into 2024. Doesn't really make a ton of sense. It. Boy can dream. We can all dream because it yeah, was no it would have been fun. But uh, yeah, no, not really in the cards uh, for the Steelers at this point. No, no, I'm going to say that one's ruled immediately out. Brandon Ayuk seems to be the the realistic of the choices here. San Francisco 49ers set to make 14 point some million dollars this year coming off back to back thousand yard seasons. Last year, he averaged like 17.9 yards per reception, which is, you know, that's just a great number to have for any team, especially the Pittsburgh Steelers working with new quarterbacks. You look at Brandon Ayuk and, oh, I got something in my eye. You look at Brandon Ayuk and you think that's realistic? I mean, I talked heavily about him on the live stream yesterday. I think it's, of the three, the best possibility. You think it's as realistic as maybe I do? Yeah, I, I think it's possible. I mean, there are, like, levels to it. You know, this is... It would be a pretty crazy situation. Um, it would be a big splash. It would mean the Steelers are forfeiting at least a first round draft pick and then probably another, you know, somewhat promising player. Um, mm -hmm. It would be tough uh, and it would really cost them to get him. But, you know, you you said at the top of the show, it's it's clearly Super Bowl or bust for the Steelers. I don't think they're afraid to take big swings at this point. And, you know, it's 
we're kind of past the point where where value uh matters a whole lot if that makes sense like you're not um i don't know you don't i think you look less at like contracts and the cost of acquiring a superstar or a star caliber player because they could get you over the hump potentially you know yes. what i mean um and i think this is a move that falls into that category like Brandon IU could be a complete game changer for for Russell Wilson, for George Pickens, and then obviously for uh, Jalen Warren and and Najee Harris too. Just opens up so many things when you have a vertical passing game like this. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I think it's obviously a move worth exploring. Um, you have to look at the price tag, but also, I mean, you saw what the Jaguars reportedly turned down, like the deal that they offered to turn down to to yeah. make. Um, a first in Zay Jones. If Zay Jones was on the Steelers, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm I would not feel awful about trading a first <laughs> no. in Zay Jones for Brandon Ayuk. That I, that seems like I, I don't know why the Jaguars didn't do that. Quite honestly, I, I think they I think it, maybe it was the 17th overall pick. Maybe they were like, oh man, I think we could get him for a second rounder. I think you're crazy to get a 26 year old for a second round pick, and you know he's still got one year of a somewhat cheap deal left, and. I mean, Zay Jones, that's, I think equivalently in the, I think it's less, you know, I think Calvin Austin is probably the guy that everybody's going to toss out there. I don't think he's equivalent to Zay Jones just yet. That would probably be the name is, I mean, if you're looking for the Pittsburgh Steelers, let's start with just the 20th pick. Are you willing to give up the 20th pick for Brandon Ayuk? And then we'll dive into what has to come with the 20th pick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I was willing to give up the 17th pick as the Jaguars. So yeah, I think I'm willing to give up the 20th pick. I mean, yeah. it's like it, the way I think about it is like, who are you going to draft with that 20th pick? I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. you could get a, a tackle who's going to have to wait behind Dan Moore for a little bit, or you get a receiver who could be something in the NFL. Like it, it may be pretty likely to be something in the NFL, but Brandon Ayuk is something in the NFL right now. Um, yep. that, that's 1400. It's 1300 yards and, seven touchdowns am i right uh, i believe seven yeah last touchdowns. season seven touchdowns last season eight right. the year it's, before yeah it's 2300 yards and 15 touchdowns over the past two seasons like this guy is tailor made and it's not like he's turning 35 years old or anything like he's in his prime so i i you know it's it's um you know a, a rookie would be cheaper but he's also not as sure as a bet as sure of a bet as brandon iu could be so i'm i'm perfectly comfortable doing that I agree. I agree. I think I'm giving up the 20th pick in the draft. I mean, I, you got to look at it like, what are you going to get? What's the risk reward? And if you're drafting an Armarius Mims at 20, there's risk associated with that. If you're drafting a Jackson Powers Johnson, there's probably less risk, but there's still risk associated with that. If you're drafting a wide receiver, there's always risk. Wide receivers, especially, especially first round wide receivers, they're like quarterbacks. Half of them work out, half of them don't work out. And when they don't work out, you're you're pretty bummed out that they don't work out. Brandon Ayuk is a guy who, if he was in this draft, he's the first wide receiver off the board. Zero questions asked. This guy's a superstar. You're going to get like, you're looking for that wide receiver to become an all pro Brandon Ayuk has become an all pro and he's still young enough where it happens. The only difference is you draft somebody. They're cheap for four years. You draft, you trade for Brandon Ayuk. He's cheap. He's not cheap for any years. You get him 14 plus million dollars this season. And then you got to extend him. And you're probably looking at 25, 20 to 25 million dollars a year for a guy like that, which, again, if the Pittsburgh Steelers are, are planning to extend Justin Fields a couple of seasons for cheap and that's their that's their plan is to not have a big bill at quarterback for the next two years. And maybe they can make that happen. Sounds good. Everybody else on that team is seemingly cheap. There are other teams in the league that make it work. And I think the Steelers could make it work as well. I think it's there. You're not going to get him for the 20th pick. You're going to have to add something. So let me toss this out there. Calvin Austin's obviously the name everybody wants to talk about. Would you give up Calvin Austin and the 20th pick in the draft for Brandon Ayuk? And maybe you might have to give up a little bit more. Maybe, maybe a maybe a fifth rounder next season or one of the Eagles yeah. sixth. Yeah, who cares? I that that extra draft pick, like sure, you could take that for nothing. Yeah. I really don't care. Um no, um, not literally, but yeah, it would it would pain me deeply to to have to watch him go but you'd have to say yes to to watching to to letting go of calvin austin i mean yeah. like i said this is this is a move that could put you over the top like that that's i i truly believe that that this is a move that could get you at least to a super bowl at least to an afc championship um if not you know win you a super bowl um so 
to that end, I think you you have to make this deal. Um, I think you have to give up Calvin Austin. Like I said, it's it's a move that it, this you can't think as much about value here. You can't think as much about like next. I, I like I don't even think about next year with a move like this. I don't even think about no. paying Brandon Ayuk after a year. It's let's go all in this year and see what we can do, and we'll figure the rest out later. You know, it's yeah, yeah. That's yeah so I agree. like, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I agree. I, I think that you look at it and you say, if Brandon Ayuk is Brandon Ayuk's your guy for you got four years with him. You got four years of Brandon Ayuk because you're going to extend him. So you're looking at 30 years old. That's when the cutoff is. So you have until 30 years old to say, okay, sounds good. This is it. T- TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, and Mika Fitzpatrick are not getting any younger. You finally have an offense around him. Najee Harris is entering the last year of his rookie deal. Chances are you're not going to pick up that fifth year option. I just look at it like, again, they are Super Bowl or bust this season, and there's no chance that they're going to look at it and say, we're going to avoid wide receiver because we want to be like, they haven't been cautious. They've been as, as extreme as humanly possible. That's not going to slow down now. Yeah. 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 I only think they're going to continue to, to be aggressive. And I I think even the fact that they're exploring things like this and they're, and they're being rumored to make these deals is, is a sign that they're, they're being aggressive. And, I think the other thing about the Steelers that we've learned this off season and we've learned about Omar Khan is that where there's smoke, there's fire, you know, like yes, these guys yes. don't, these guys don't get reported to, to be involved with something and then, you know, back out at the last minute or, you know, get, it gets revealed after the fact that they're not involved at all. Like yep. when Omar Khan gets involved with something, he, his hands are usually in there and they are, they are making that move. Um, It's not, it, 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 like you said, they're just not scared. They they are aggressive, and I think they will only continue to be. And I think it will only increase to to an even higher degree. So the the last name's Justin Jefferson, and that's as aggressive as you could possibly get. Is Justin Jefferson? You're giving up way more than a first round pick in Calvin Austin to go get Justin Jefferson. You're going to sign him to. I mean, if Brandon Ayuk's twenty to twenty five million dollars, and I would imagine it's more. $25 million than it is 20 Justin Jefferson's $30 million. And I would imagine it's a hard $30 million. Are you looking at just, are you even considering a trade for Justin Jefferson if he's available? Because anybody out of Minnesota saying he's not available. I talked to somebody yesterday who in Minnesota, who said he might be a little bit more available than everybody wants to make it seem. Are you giving up? Are you even considering a Justin Jefferson trade? I, I just don't know, like, how is, I don't know how that would be possible, you know? Like, I I just think about how all the other big contracts the Steelers have. You know, they have to, they'd have to pay Justin, uh, Justin Fields a little bit more, whether you extend him, pick up that fifth-year option, whatever you decide to do. Um, like, uh, there's a, a payday coming up for George Pickens, like, n- not that far into the future. Same yeah. with Roger Jones. Like, they're... It, like uh, and I believe you have to make a t- decision about Pat Fryermuth pretty soon as well, no, right? This this would be Pat Fryermuth's contract year. You have you got a while for Broderick Jones, especially because you could pick up his fifth year option. You still got four years on that guy. George Pickens, you're going next year is his contract year. So you got you got you got decisions to be made re- relatively soon, right? And, and and you know, like with all those guys, like. I don't know. You're probably picking Justin Jefferson if he's in your lap over Broderick Jones. Yeah. If you make it, if you make you pick the two, but like, I don't know. I think you can. There just might be better options out there. There might be more affordable options with a similar level of upside. Like I, I don't know. I'm not trying to talk anyone out of Justin Jefferson. Like there is no doubt that in a vacuum on the Steelers, he is a complete game changer. He is the best receiver in the league. There is no doubt about that in my mind. Um, but. I, I I just don't see how it would work, and I don't. It's it's mortgaging the future in a way that I am less comfortable with. You know, uh, it's yeah. it, like especially compared to NIU. You know, like yeah. What are you Ayuk giving up is, for Justin Jefferson? Like uh, how much? What's the draft compensation for that? Two firsts minimum. At, le- at least, yeah. And then I don't know. Is is like three more picks? Like, is that ridiculous? Like. <laughs> I don't know. Like this is, this is the best player in the league at the second most important position in the league. I would argue, you know, like, yeah, I don't know about, I don't know if I agree with that one, but I agree with the best position in the league. I agree. I think left tackle might, might, might stand over him, but fair enough. But 
but yeah, but like, so it's quarterback and like, this is receiver is what second or th- oh, like, at least they're there. paid that way. Receivers are yeah, paid yeah. that way. Like they are. So, you know, like you're, you're going to have to give up a haul for it. Um, and that's, that's the other thing I is there is maybe a future, uh, with Ayuk with, uh, Justin Jefferson, there's no future. You have to win now, you know? Yeah. I agree. I agree. I look at you're giving up two firsts, maybe Calvin Austin and more, which is crazy. You're paying him $30 million a year. So you better hope that Justin Jeff or Justin Fields is worth, you know, taking as he is. He's cool with taking a, a five year. I'll make 15 million bucks a season type of deal, which will never happen. I just think that like Justin Jefferson would be the dream. Like if you're going to win a Super Bowl this season and you're saying who cares about next year, if you're pulling a, a an L.A. Rams. Go get Justin Jefferson. But if you're going to be realistic about the situation, it's Brandon Ayuk. It's the only one that makes a lot of sense. You could you could probably find somebody else. Like you could probably shoot lower and look for a guy like a Devonte Adams or whoever. Where you're just and I don't know if Adams is on the table, but he's older. You're not going to yeah. give up a first round pick for him. You could probably land him for cheaper than that and say, you know, sounds good. Let's let's bring it to Pittsburgh. And I think that's equivalent to any of these guys. Like you're getting a yeah. superstar wide receiver for shorter, but if you're looking Super Bowl or bust right now, maybe that's an option. I think that there are a lot of names out there, or at least a couple names out there that if you're going to shoot for the stars are ahead of Justin Jefferson. Like Justin Jefferson's just you're going to have to pay this guy so much money that yeah. he's going to make more than your quarterback for the next like 3 years. That's too much money on top of having to give up multiple first round picks for a guy. I'm just, I'm super opposed to multiple first round picks for any player, especially a yeah. wide. like wide receivers don't win any Super Bowls. They just, they just don't, they help you get there, but quarterback wins yeah. the Super Bowls. And if you can't pay your quarterback, you're not winning the Super Bowl. Well, I mean, I guess that is the other thing. Like, are you ever going to have to pay a quarterback? Like, I, I don't know if you, if you get to the point where you're paying Russ or you're, you're paying like, you know, on the off chance that Justin Jefferson becomes your, or not Justin Jefferson, Justin Fields. I was doing that all day yesterday. I think that the having two Justins would be. Yeah. Terrible. You know, for, for me personally, yeah, that, yeah. that wouldn't work. So, yeah. um, but yeah, if you get to the point where Justin Fields is your starter and he plays well enough that you have to pay him, you're probably winning at the point where Justin Jefferson isn't really necessary. Like he isn't the move that would put you over the top. You know, if, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. I like you're not looking at you're not looking at the situation and going, oh, Justin Fields has earned a forty five million dollar contract and we need Justin. Like you don't at that point. Justin Fields has done enough with a lot like you have George Pickens. George Pickens should be your wide receiver one. Brandon Ayuk could be your wide receiver one for the next two years. I think that makes so much more sense. There are other names out there. Tyler Boyd has been tossed out a lot. Steelers seemingly lose an interest in that one. Say you don't go after Tyler Boyd if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. Say you trade Calvin Austin to the San Francisco 49ers in exchange for Brandon Ayuk. Do you eliminate yourself from draft talk for a wide receiver, or do you now look at it in a different light and say maybe they need maybe they need a slot? Do you completely get rid of it and go after the cheapest slot option you could possibly find? How do you approach that? Because uh, you're going to have a missing piece at that point, and if the Steelers aren't signing Tyler Boyd, where do you go from there? Yeah, if you're so if you're out on Boyd, if Calvin Austin, excuse me, if Calvin Austin is uh is getting traded for for a Brandon Ayuk or whoever, I don't think you take yourself out of consideration to draft a guy. Um, yep. I still think there are some some guys in this draft that can fill a slot position um, that that I really like, and they wouldn't be first round talents or anything like that. There are guys that you can get in the second or probably much later. Um, so I would feel very comfortable going that route. Um, and, and you look at the free agent market now and it's like Josh Reynolds and after that, like, I don't really see a starting quote. Like, I don't see a player who's an upgrade over an Allen Robinson after, yeah. after like outside of Reynolds, quite honestly. So, um, I feel like you, you go into the draft and you're looking at a much deeper pool of players, um, that can be impact guys and, and can start right away. And for that reason, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take wide receiver off of the board, but I think it does lower the urgency if if you end up trading Calvin Austin for Brandon Ayuk or something like that. It takes some of the pressure off to like go first round with it and get a Brian Thomas or something like that. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that you lower it. I don't think you take it off the board. I still think it's one of your top draft picks. But I think, again, it's like, just like you said, like starts in the second round, depending on who's there. But chances are you're like a third, fourth round pick. This is a guy that's going to come in minimal prep. He's going to be another Calvin. He's your next Calvin Austin. That's who you're looking at is your next Calvin Austin, which hopefully turns into something big, might not turn into something big. But I think you do remove that need pretty drastically from your draft board and then just figure that out, you know, because you have tight ends and, and like you have Pat Fryermuth who could pretty much be a slot wide receiver. You have Connor Hayward who pretty much is a slot wide receiver. I, I don't know what Darnell Washington ever turns into when it comes to being a pass catching tight end, but you have those two and you could, you could utilize them. You could utilize Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. Like, I don't know what Van Jefferson could do, but maybe you toss him in there. I just think that yeah. there are, there are options, you know, when, when you could find, a slot guy is is important, but not as important as yeah, exactly. Like you could you could find an option there, and you could find a rookie option there, and you could feel pretty okay with it. But I would imagine if Ayuk's on the table, and if Ayuk happens, I mean, at that point you're giving up your first round pick, so you yeah. don't have it. So you you got to you got to narrow your choices as it is. I think that that uh, that's a possibility. This just popped in my head. Let me ask you this question: You think that there's a chance that the Pittsburgh Steelers? They have two third round picks, fourth round pick, second round pick, and first round pick. They trade for Brandon Ayu, get rid of the first round pick, then use some of those other picks to move themselves back into the first round. Do you think there's a possibility there? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that would make a lot of sense, quite honestly. If you feel like, you know, um, if you feel like, you know, Jackson Powers Johnson is a can't miss guy, then yep. for sure, go, go ahead and move up. Um, you know, if you feel like, uh, Trying to think of who is McKinstry. Yeah, Zach yeah. Frazier. Right. Uh, if you feel like you cannot afford to miss on one of those guys, and also that you can move up into a position to get one of those guys, like that that's the one thing is you can't can't swing and miss when you do that. That's the no. it's you have to know that you're getting your guy, and you have to know who your guy is. Um, it's not just oh, well, whoever falls to us at this position, like, no, you have to have a target and you have to know who it is. Um, luckily they have some options, like you said, Powers Johnson. Uh, Quinian Mitchell, uh, you know, Kool Aid, guys like that. Like, f I'm perfectly comfortable because they're they're just, they've got you know like a bunch of draft picks. Like, it's not, yeah, it's not like they would be starved to to select guys after that. No, no, I think you can move bottom of the first, early second, get, get a guy that you consider a first round pick that you believe is going to start immediately. You remove yourself, you put yourself into a tighter hole. But I don't know, they haven't done anything on the defensive line, and I think there's a part of me that thinks. They're pretty content on the on the defensive line, as crazy as that sounds. Hmm. Maybe they're maybe they're content with their offensive tackles, and they're they're feeling okay about that until next season. Who knows? Who knows how, what their plan is? But I think that that is certainly a possibility. And the way that Omar Khan has operated this offseason, nothing would surprise me. So a year ago, that's a fairy tale. That does not you know, like you're like okay, come on, stop just tossing stuff out there. This year, I think that's real. I think it could really happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and like we said, like the Steelers, I think are looking much more short term than anything else. Like, yes, you know, I, I don't think they like last year was the build the depth draft. This year, yep. it's the let's put ourselves over the top draft. There, it's a different strategy. It's a different time. It's a different Steelers attitude, and I think they're approaching everything in a in a vastly different way. And this a, a, a trade up, you know, if you know, there's a chain reaction of trading for an Ayuk or whatever, but, and then trading up, but that all kind of falls into the category of we're being super aggressive. We're, we're looking for the, the best possible moves to put us over the top. And we're looking for difference makers, uh, not just, not just value. You know, we're looking for guys to, to really raise our ceiling. Yep. And I think you could do that. And I would not, again, I would not be surprised if the Pittsburgh Steelers did. It's going to be a wild week. It, I'd imagine next week I head to the league meetings and I would imagine next week is just as crazy as this week, the Steelers are not done yet. I'm excited to get to talk to Mike Tomlin and Art Rooney and I believe possibly Omar Khan next week at the at the league meetings. And I mean, maybe I don't know, maybe maybe they got some insight on how crazy things are about to get and that they're not done. I'm just excited to see Omar Khan's reaction if given the opportunity to ask him of. Dude, what is like what is your what is happening right now? Because this is all madness and I would imagine he's got a pretty uh pretty good response with that we're heading out of here thank you guys so much for jumping on to another episode of all steelers talk make sure to subscribe to us on youtube youtube.com slash all steelers talk checks out anywhere you get your podcast 
Find all of our work at allsteelers.com and our pick coverage at insidethepanthers.com. Remember, we just hit 1,000 subscribers on our new YouTube page, so make sure to continue to go subscribe. You will enter to win a couple of giveaways, including a signed Mean Joe Green jersey. We're going to do that next week. At some point, we will set you guys up with the live stream link to jump in and try to win some prizes. Enjoy another beautiful day in the Berg. Peace.